Hi, on the woodpecker today. I'm finishing my roof. Even though my ceiling is covered with a tarp, I would rather have a permanent roof over my head. The first thing I need to do is to insulate the ceiling. So on a nice Saturday morning, René and I removed the big tarp which covered the entire shop. We can now begin the first step in the new roof. The insulation. We choose spray urethane to insulate because it's supposed to be the best insulation for a cathedral roof. So the insulation guy climbs into the roof and starts spraying the insulation. Just looking at him work seems not very different from spraying a piece of furniture, except that the foam puffs. After several hours, the first coat is done. Since I have six inches of insulation, he must put a second coat everywhere. While one guy is spraying the second coat, Another one is cleaning the excess on the 2x8s. After several hours, the entire roof is insulated. The next morning, we start installing the roof's plywood. I don't know if you remember this, but all that plywood is recycled from the form of the foundation. The day starts with only Marco, who came to help. But it doesn't take too long, Vincent and Frankie arrive to help too. From the start, Vincent, Frankie and I jump on the roof and start to install all the plywood. Since they're not construction grade, their size is half an inch bigger. So, Marco stays on the ground to cut them to size. René helps him for the bigger cuts. Hello. But the work really gets started when Jan arrives. He doesn't break a sweat even when he's throwing an old sheet onto the roof. But the same sheet takes all three of us to lift it in place. Installing the plywood goes pretty fast. Faster than I anticipated. This is the last piece to install. But now we must store our tools almost on the ground. This was way better before because we didn't have to bend that much. Next, we install a membrane on one side. The last strip goes way better than the others, because we finally figure out how to install it. Now the yard side is completed. Our helpers had to leave. So, René and I install the west side by ourselves. This was way longer, but we managed to do it anyway. We're now ready to install the roofing itself. It will be those metal tiles. This is the west side, all done. René and I worked on it a full week before going to work. So now we're pros and we can film the installation on the other side. Let me tell you that first of all, I'm a real man. And I didn't read the instructions before starting the work. Who reads the instruction anyway? René should have read them before. So she could have seen that the eave starter was supposed to be installed before the membrane. So now we have to peel off the first five inches. The sun softens the glue, but we still need a heat gun at some places to help us. Then we can install the eave starter. 
It's just a matter of putting them right at the edge of the plywood. I leave a couple of inches for the overlap between each ones. Then we screw it to the plywood. The membrane sticks out of the roof, so I just cut the excess. When I checked it afterward, I'm glad this can be seen. Next, we install the J-trim. It's like an internal gutter on the side of the tiles to allow the water to get out if ever it goes there. Then I start the first row of tiles. I lay them one by one on the roof, but I don't screw them. I do this because of the eave starter overlap. This small notch could make the first row crooked. All the vertical seams must be straight, just like this one. Then I double check each tile to see if they're all straight. Here we can see that it is. So now I can start to screw them in place. I put one screw at each extremity. Then René screws the other two. Before going too far, we install the gable cap on the J trim and screw it in place. Then I can cut the last tile. After tracing the cut line, I cut the top edge of the tile. Turn it around and cut the rest. I also cut the half tile I need to begin the next row. In the end, I cut the corners, just like the factory cut. Then I can start on the second row. This row is installed the same way as the first one. We lay down three rows from the outside on the scaffold. We install the roof brackets that I made and bring boxes of tiles onto the roof. Those brackets are super simple. They are made of some pieces of 2x4s, cut at 30 degrees glued and nailed together. I make six of those to support us on the roof. But before jumping onto the roof, we must change our shoes, because the sand lying around the shop makes them too slippery. Then I install each tile one by one. As you can see, they lock one into the other. Then Rene screws them in place. The last tile of the row is measured and cut in place. Then I installed it, just like the others. The next morning, we continue to install the tiles. But this time, Vincent comes again to help. Here, we can better see how a tile is screwed in place. A first screw is screwed at an angle toward the top and toward the adjacent tile. Then the second screw is, again, screwed at an angle toward the exterior to stretch the tile. To finish it all, two other screws are screwed. One thing for sure, two persons with screw guns sure speed up the process. After three rows are screwed down, we have to lift up the platform. Then we just have to retie it higher. Then we bring boxes of tiles higher and continue the last rows of tiles. After a whole day of installing tiles, both sides are completed. I forgot to order some pieces for the ridge. 
So, two weeks later, I have everything to finish the roof. To install the ridge, I start by cutting the membrane that I left so the roof wouldn't leak. By removing the membrane, I expose the hole that I left at the top of the roof to vent it. I remove this small section on the length of the old roof so the cool air from the soffit at the bottom of the roof can vent out. This will act as a chimney to evacuate hot air with the help of this ridge vent. It looks like corrugated plastic covered with something to prevent insects from entering. All this must be sealed with this roll of caulking. I laid it on top of the roof, just above the ridge vent's edge. After rolling a line of caulk on both sides of the roof, I put the ridge vent on the top of the roof and the ridge vent is evenly folded in the center. With this type of caulk in a roll, it's very easy to install the ridge vent. I just have to pull the paper, which covers the cock, and stick the ridge vent on it. On top of this, I put a ridge cap starter. This helps to align the actual ridge cap tiles. Speaking of tiles, the first one must be bent and cut to cover the front top of the ridge. After bending it, I cut the center of the bend and this becomes the starter tile. I install it onto the roof itself. This tile is screwed to the back and also to the bend I made earlier. Then, I installed them. They lock to each other just like the rest of the roof tiles and they're screwed to the roof. I do the same kind of bend for the last tile as I did for the first one and I put it in place. This tile is held on with two screws from the outside. Okay, this is not that obvious, but I'm screwing it right now. Now that the roof is completed, we have to remove our work platform. When I push one of the 2x8s down to the ground, it broke in half. Lucky for us, it didn't break when we were standing on it. This was one of the reasons why we were always tied down while we were working up there. But those brackets damaged the roof here and there. This is the worst scratch. I don't understand why. They were covered with a thick piece of neoprene underneath. So I bought two touch-up bottles. Two, because if I drop an open one on the roof, I still have a spare one. Each spot is retouched. The last thing I do before going down for the last time is film my work on the roof. With a 15 year warranty, I don't expect going up there in the near future. Here is my new roof. I really like it. It's not that difficult to install a metal roof. If I was able to do it, anyone can do it. I still have a lot to do. So, see you for my next episode on The Woodpecker.